Hi everyone, this is Zach Walls. Today's audiobook is going to be a little bit different. If you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I'll just jump right into the story. But I feel that this one needs a little more background information. As you may know, the goal of this channel is to provide audiobook narrations of classroom literature, and that this mostly consists of curriculum-approved short stories, poems, historical documents, and public domain novels. Many of these stories were written either as far back as hundreds of years ago, or as recently as within the last decade or so, and have also been agreed upon as sources of a well-rounded literary exposure for growing readers. Today is different because today's short story ended up gaining popularity back in 2012 as an example of some of the problems faced when it comes to standardized testing here in the United States. So here's what you need to know before we begin. This story is called The Hare and the Pineapple, and it was written by Daniel Pinkwater, who is a popular children's book author who considers himself a nonsense writer. It was originally called The Story of the Rabbit and the Eggplant, and was included in a novel that he published back in 1990 called Borgel. I've included links to Daniel Pinkwater's original version of the story, as well as a link to his website if you're interested in learning more about his work. Daniel ended up selling this story to Pearson, who some of you may know is a company that creates a wide variety of educational materials for schools, among which include standardized tests. They ended up making some edits to the story, added some test questions, and included it in several standardized tests throughout the country. The version that you will hear today comes from the 2012 New York 8th grade standardized English test. The passage and the six questions that followed ended up being pulled from the exam after the confusion that it had caused the students taking the exam and for the criticism it received for being such an absurd testing segment to begin with. I've included a link to the test's version of the passage and the accompanying questions in the description. There's also a New York Times article and an NPR article that goes into more details regarding the incident. And now, with all of this in mind, I present to you The Hare and the Pineapple. Enjoy! The Hare and the Pineapple by Daniel Pinkwater Narrated by Zach Walls In olden times, the animals of the forest could speak English just like you and me. One day, a pineapple challenged a hare to a race. I forgot to mention, fruits and vegetables were able to speak too. A hare is like a rabbit, only skinnier and faster. This particular hare was known to be the fastest animal in the forest. You, a pineapple, have the nerve to challenge me, a hare, to a race? The hare asked the pineapple. This must be some sort of joke. No, said the pineapple. I want to race you. Twenty-six miles, and may the best animal win. You aren't even an animal, the hare said. You're a tropical fruit. Well, you know what I mean, the pineapple said. The animals of the forest thought it was very strange that a tropical fruit should want to race a very fast animal. The pineapple has some trick up its sleeve, the moose said. Pineapples don't have sleeves, the owl said. Well, you know what I mean, the moose said. If a pineapple challenges a hare to a race, it must be that the pineapple knows some secret trick that will allow it to win. The pineapple probably expects us to root for the hare and then look like fools when it loses, said a crow. Then the pineapple will win the race because the hare is overconfident and takes a nap or gets lost or something. The animals agreed that this made sense. There was no reason a pineapple should challenge a hare unless it had a clever plan of some sort. So the animals, wanting to back a winner, all cheered for the pineapple. When the race began, the hare sprinted forward and was out of sight in less than a minute. The pineapple just sat there, never moving an inch. The animals crowded around, watching to see how the pineapple was going to cleverly beat the hare. Two hours later, when the hare crossed the finish line, the pineapple was still sitting still and hadn't moved an inch. The animals ate the pineapple. Moral, pineapples don't have sleeves. Question 6. Beginning with paragraph 4, in what order are the events in the story told? A. Switching back and forth between places. B. 
in the order in which events happen, c. Switching back and forth between the past and the present, d. In the order in which the hare tells the events to another animal. Question 7. The animals ate the pineapple most likely because they were a. Hungry b. Excited c. Annoyed d. Amused Question 8. Which animal spoke the wisest words? a. The hare b. The moose c. The crow d. The owl Question 9. Before the race, how did the animals feel toward the pineapple? A. Suspicious B. Kindly C. Sympathetic D. Envious Question 10. What would have happened if the animals had decided to cheer for the hare? A. The pineapple would have won the race B. They would have been mad at the hare for winning C. The hare would have just sat there and not moved. D. They would have been happy to have cheered for a winner. Question 11. When the moose said the pineapple has some trick up its sleeve, he means that the pineapple A. Is wearing a disguise B. Wants to show the animals a trick C. Has a plan to fool the animals D. Is going to pull something out of its sleeve. For more audiobook narrations and classroom literature, subscribe to the channel. Comment below to suggest a narration and ring the bell for notifications.